Hey there, how you doing? What up though? I was sitting here watching something. What was I watching? Oh, I was watching something on YouTube and it was about marriage restoration. And it was couples sharing stories about what God had done in their marriage and how God had restored their marriage, right? And so as the lady was sharing, um, she was let she's she mentioned Exodus 14, 14. And I was like, oh, let me go look and see what that's talking about. Let me go look and let's kind of recap that, right? So I went to read Exodus 14. And I'm going to read it to y'all. We're just going to go right here and we're going to read Exodus 14. And this is about when uh, God was delivering the Israelites out of captivity to, from the Egyptians. At this point, they've already been let go. The Egyptians let them go. They didn't gave them gifts and all kind of stuff, set them up and let them go. But now they didn't change their mind. And they're like, hold up, wait a minute. So, y'all, I'm a little extra. And I'm going to give it to you how... I do it when I spend time with the Lord. The word of God says don't add to or take from his word. So I never do that. But sometimes I just make it like modern day for myself to like make it, you know, like like it would be today. So let me share this little story with y'all. We're going to just going to do this right here right now. So let's read it. So I'm going to start. <coughs> oh, Lord, hold on. I'm getting over a cold too. That thing was ooh, kicking my butt this week. But God delivered. He provides. He always does. So let's go. So we're going to start in Exodus 14, right? Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back to, there's some places I can't pronounce, Pi H, we're going to abbreviate it, Pi H, and to camp between Migdal and the Red Sea. Camp across from Baal Zephon on the shore of the sea. The king will think, hmm, the Israelites are lost, trapped by the desert. I will make the king stubborn yet again, so he will chase after ch chase after them, but I will defeat the king and his army. This is God doing all this, right? And this is God talking to the to uh, Moses. This will bring honor to me, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. The Israelites did just as they were told. Verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the Israelites had left, he and his officers changed their minds about them. They said, what have we done? <laughs> we have let the Israelites leave. We have lost our slaves. Hold up, wait a minute. This, what, we didn't let them go. We ain't got no slaves. Who gonna work for us? We gonna have to do the work ourselves? No, mm -mm. let's go get them. We got to go get them. Let's get your stuff. We going to get them. Verse six. So the king prepared, remember, um, that's my little pair, my little ad lib, my little paraphrase. So the king prepared his war chariot and took his army with him. He took 600 of his best chariots together with all the other chariots of Egypt, each with an officer in it. The Lord made the king of Egypt stubborn. So he chased the Israelites who were leaving victoriously. Uh -huh. They were leaving. They were victorious in their leaving because God had delivered. The Israelites had even gave them, not the Israelites, excuse me, the Egyptians had even given them gifts and all kinds of things to leave. And I get a call and that's not going to come through because that's going to interrupt my video. I have to call her back. Um, but God has the ability to change the king's heart. He talks about that, I believe it's in Psalms. But we see it all through uh, Exodus as God told Moses, go to, um, go to Pharaoh, tell him this, but... I'm going to harden his heart. He he not going to do it. Or he going to say he going to do it and then he going to change his mind or whatever the case may be. So God already told Moses what was going to happen before it happened. But I just said that because God has the ability to change the heart of men. God has the ability to remove the layers. God has the ability to be God. There is no other God but our Heavenly Father, that God. So the Egyptians with all the king's horses, chariot drivers, and army chased the Israelites. They caught up with them while they were camped by the Red Sea near Pi H and Baal Zephon. When the Israelites saw the king and his army coming after them, they were very frightened and cried to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, what have you done to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There were plenty of graves for us, graves for us in Egypt. We told you in Egypt, let us alone. We will stay and serve the Egyptians. Now we will die in the desert. Shut up. 
I'm so tired of y'all whining and crying. Oh my gosh, y'all didn't see what the Lord didn't did for y'all before. Like, shut up with all this whining. That's 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 probably what Moses was thinking, because that's what I was thinking as I was reading this. That's probably how that's how our angels be feeling when we be whining and crying. Like, you didn't see what the Lord did for you last year this time. You seen what the Lord did for you before. Why do you think he forget about you this time? Why do you think he won't come through for you this time? What's what's the issue? Okay, let's keep going. But Moses answered, um, we told the Egyptians, let us alone. Let, what, what did I leave off at? I don't even know where I left off at. Let's see. Um, he said, what have you done to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There were plenty of graves for us in Egypt. We told you in Egypt, let us alone. We will stay and serve the Egyptians. Just let us be slaves. Y'all cried out to the Lord because of how the Egyptians were treating y'all. He heard y'all cry. He sent Moses to deliver y'all. Moses delivered y'all. And then y'all still crying and complaining. We can't win for losing. Like we just, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Now we would die in the desert. Verse 13. But Moses answered. He was nicer than me. He didn't tell him to shut up. He said, don't be afraid. Stand still and you will see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. That's for somebody out there. Let me read that again. Exodus 14, verse 13 and 14. But Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand still and you will see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Command the Israelites to start moving. That's what God's saying to a lot of us. Why are y'all still crying out to me? Why are y'all still praying to me? Asking y'all to show y'all this, asking this about this. And you ain't even did the thing I told you to do. Start walking. You don't know. I don't know which way I'm walking. Just walk. Just walk. Just go. Just do the first thing I told you to do. Just do that part. He said, why are you crying out to me? Command the Israelites to start moving. Raise your walking stick. Hold it over the sea so that the sea will split and the people can cross it on dry land. I will make the Egyptians stubborn so they will chase the Israelites. But I will be honored when I defeat the king and all the chariot drivers and chariots. When I defeat the king, his chariot drivers and chariots, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. 19. Now the angel of God that usually traveled in front of Israel's army moved behind them. Mm -hmm. Also, the pillar of cloud moved from in front of the people and stood behind them. So the cloud came between the Egyptians and the Israelites. This made it dark for the Egyptians, but gave light to the Israelites. So the cloud kept the two armies apart all night. And then Moses held his hand over the sea all that night, the, the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind, making the sea become dry ground. The water was split and the Israelites went through the sea on dry land with a wall of water on the right and on their left. Then all the king's horses, chariots and chariot drivers followed them into the sea. When morning came, the Lord looked down from the pillar of cloud and fire at the Egyptian army and made them panic. He kept the wheels of the chariots from turning, made it hard to drive the chariots. The Egyptians shouted, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Y'all, I'm silly. Just come on. Then the Lord told Moses, hold your hand over the sea so the uh, over the sea so that the water will come back over the Egyptians, their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses raised his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its place. The Egyptians tried to run from it, but the Lord swept them away into the sea. The water returned, covering the chariots, the chariot drivers, and all the king's armies that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites crossed the sea on dry land with a wall of water on the right and on their left. So that day, the Lord saved the Israelites from the Egyptians yet again. And the Israelites saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore. <coughs> Excuse me. When the Israelites saw the great power the Lord had used against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and they trusted him and his servant Moses. And I just keep hearing God say, walk, walk, move, go. 
Do what that thing is he told you to do. That thing in your heart that you know that God has been uh, pulling at you and tugging at you to do to get started. Go, move, walk. Don't worry about having the right lighting because I still don't know about this lighting. This stuff, I, I can't figure it out. I got a ring light, that thing, just make things look crazy. I don't know. But I turn on this camera and I hit record on my phone and I just share what the Lord has for me to share. And it's going to bless who it's intended to bless. Go. God says walk. He says he's able to do the impossible. If only yet you believe. He will fight your battles for you. If only you walk. One of my favorite scriptures is in Joshua 1. And, jo and God tells Joshua that he has to go and to possess the land that he is giving them. Go and possess the land. I'm giving you the land, but I need you to possess the land. So as I was reading this, and I was reading this, and I got to scripture 19... Was it 19? Yes, it says, Now the angel of God that usually traveled in front of Israel's army moved behind them. Also, the pillar of cloud moved from in front of the people and stood behind them. This is it. So the cloud came between the Egyptian and the Israelites. This made it dark for the Egyptians, but gave light to the Israelites. And that right there dropped a song in my spirit. And I kept saying, light in the darkness. I'm like, what is that song? I remember that song from my previous church. What is that song? And so I had to Google it and I found it, y'all. So I'm going to play a little bit of this song. We're going to do a little worship. You are here. What? Moving in our midst. Mm. I worship you. Y'all, God is so good. I worship you. He is so good. You are here. God is so good. Working in oh, my God. Place. He is so faithful. I he is so faithful. I worship you. Take the time. Take the time. You are here. Oh, my God. We love you, Moving Lord. In our we love you, God. I worship you. Have your way. We surrender I all to you, Father God. You. We surrender all you to you. You are God. here working in this place. I worship you. I like the chorus. Part. I worship you. Hey. hey. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God.
video. Because that song dropped in my spirit so strong when I was reading this and listening to this video on this YouTube. And again, something she said, oh, because she mentioned this, uh, Exodus 14. So then I had to go read it. And then as I was reading this, and it said that uh, this made it dark for the Egyptians, but gave light to the Israelites. And I just was light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And I think there may be other versions, but this one is Sinach, S-I-N-A-C-H, and it's called Waymaker. Go, 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 go listen to it. Go, yeah, spend some time with the Lord. Listen to it, worship. Allow him to minister to you. Y'all, there is no one like God. Jehovah. The God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you can have everlasting life, but that you can also have life and have it here more abundantly. Give him a chance. Trust in, his, in, in the process. Do what it is that God is calling you to do, what God has told you to do, even if you're unsure of what that looks like. Sometimes I don't even know. I just feel in my heart that I need to hit record on this phone and then I just share what the Lord has given me to share. So I know this is for somebody. Y'all, God is so good. And then, no, I'm done. I'm going to go back to watching my YouTube video. I pray that y'all have an amazing, amazing, uh, what's today, Thursday? Thursday. As you prepare for the holiday season, Merry Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. I love you so, so much. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Go forth in power in the name of Jesus. I will talk to y'all on the next video. Bye.